Fishing Freaks, welcome on back to the channel. It is a steamer, hot, stinky steamer today. Every day this week, well over 100 degrees, and so we are going to explore bass fishing in the hot summer heat. Now, I'm not talking about a little post-front high-pressure heat system coming in. I'm talking about dog days. I'm talking about no wind sweltering out there, your skin turning into rawhide out on the lake, that kind of thing. Me personally, guys, I really don't even like to go bass fishing in the dog days where I live. I usually like to explore and go other places up north uh, and go to some just different different climates that are much better for fishing. Uh, the fishing is, fishing is actually really good this time of year in other places, but where I live, I'm about two zip codes away from the surface of the sun. Elderly, pets, livestock, they are croaking. And in fact, I had a chicken the other day, right after I got, got done laying an egg, one of those hot days, it was like 108, bit the dust. Bit the dust post egg lay, that's how hot it is down here right now. So let's jump in the boat, let's head out to the lake, and I'm gonna show you guys what I would do on one of these really hot, nasty summer days. All right, so we're on the water right now. Now, the first thing I'm gonna tell you guys, don't mess around fishing in the heat. You know, a few hours out here in the, in the afternoon can be pretty rough. I personally don't wear sunscreen. I haven't worn sunscreen all year long, but I do cover up um, pretty well. Today, we're going with a big hat, straw hat. It's a good move. Gloves, gloves. So I even went to the dermatologist earlier this year uh, got checked out, all good, um, but I just want to stay safe, you know. If you're going to fish out in the sun for hours and hours at a time, a little vitamin D is good, man. You know, take the shirt off, get some natural vitamin D. I usually get like an hour. If I'm fishing uh, in the sun, I'll take my shirt off, and then everything goes back on. Gloves on, face mask on. If I don't have this thing really uh, covering my face, that's number one. Number two is drink the crap out of some water or whatever your favorite hydration drink is. Probably don't need to be going hard on the brewskis at like two or three afternoon when it's, you know, 105. I know this is like really basic stuff, but I'm just, I'm, we're starting from scratch here. If you guys are not used to fishing in this heat, I like to actually take a little uh, water jug. So I've got my water jug here that stays cool. I usually put ice in it. And then I'll also, um, you know, put some ice in the boat or use my refrigerator. And then I'll fill this up with water and I'll put a little uh, Himalayan salt in here for uh, some electrolytes and some minerals because those are just extra things that you feel after you're sweating your, uh, your keister off out here for hours and hours. Now that all that basic stuff is out of the way, probably the biggest question that um, is gonna come to mind is like, what do you throw in the summertime when it's dead hot? And to keep things basic is plastics. Gotta have plastics, um, finesse plastics, worms. So we'll get into more of the baits here in a minute because I know you guys are curious about the baits, but um, probably more importantly is the locations that you're gonna be fishing. If you're going out to a lake, middle of the day fishing, you're going to need to look for some shade or some current or some depth. So one of the first places I like to look is offshore cover. You know, I'll usually start in like 18 to 20 foot, somewhere around there, and I'll start looking around uh, for bait and things like that, and I'll also look for docks. I mean, docks are just an essential way to find any kind of fish when it's really hot. They love the shade, it's cooler, they don't have eyelids, so they, they'd like to either get in a depth that is nice for light penetration where it's, it's not harsh on their eyes, or they'll get in some shade. It's also gonna be a little cooler in the shade, as we all know. So those are big factors right there. If you have current, that's great. Uh, on a lot of our lakes here, these reservoirs, there's not much current. Um, the way that you can kind of supplement current is wind. So windy banks, main lake stuff that's going to have higher oxygen than the backs of the creeks where, 
it is stagnant and hot. Some of you may be asking, why the heck are you out here in the middle of the day? And it is 317 right now. Yes, obviously the best time probably to go is early, early in the morning. But those bass have been feeding at night as well. But right early in the morning, you got that top water bite. There's a little bit of feeding activity left over from the night bite and then they're full and it goes dead. I mean, you're, you're talking dead, dead at like 9 a.m. And then it's at about three or four o'clock. I usually see a little pickup. It's like they're, they're, they're feeding that they had that morning is sort of waning off a little bit and they'll start feeding again. So I'll usually go right to where there's shade, where there's deep cover. Um, they might be, you know, starting to push shad up to the surface in some places even, uh, really get active and get that second meal going for the day. Then as it starts getting darker at sunset, then I'll usually go up a little bit shallower and try to fish some sort of top water. So that is the win and the wear for me on these blazing hot summer days. Now let's pick up a stick and uh, let's talk about more of the bait selections. So one of the first rods that you're gonna need is some sort of moving bait rod. Fish that you actually see or school in, maybe they don't hit a top water. You got some wind coming around, some, some rocks, some, some deeper cover that you wanna hit. You need something to throw a moving bait. And for me, you know, one of the best ones for summer, just in general, in most bodies of water, unless it's super clear, is a crankbait. You know, a little medium diving crankbait, you can throw a deep diving crankbait. Uh, another thing I love to pick up in the summertime is a spoon. It's great for clear water. Um, it also works in pretty stained water, typically gets some big bites, and it's all over the place. So when fish are chasing, if they're just below the surface, they'll hit a spoon. If, uh, if they're down at the bottom, I can throw that at all depths and kind of hit that. Same thing with the swim bait, really. I've got a deep diving uh, jig head in here. I've got a three quarter ounce right now, but you know, a swim bait like this, you can you can slow roll it deep. You can cast it out if they're kind of busting near the surface and just reel it. This is typically for a little better water clarity, but these are some moving bait options that I like to have tied on. The spinner bait can be good, but I like that more like early morning or if there's a shad spawn happening or if I'm gotta fish that around some cover, some brush and things like that, then, then I'll pick up the spinner bait. But typically this time of year, Fish are more out in those deeper spots, more open water. And uh, these selections right here are pretty good for your moving baits. But there's a million moving baits and there's a thousand different ways you can catch fish. So this is just my personal preferences on things for most of the lakes I fish. The other thing you must have, you must have in your selections is some sort of soft plastic dragger, baby. You gotta have something to crawl around down there with your plastics. Whether that be a, a shaky head on a spinning setup or a big worm setup like I have here, this is my favorite of all time for fishing uh, post spawn through summer, even into fall offshore. It is a 10 inch, 10 inch worm. This is the Mondo worm, some sort of purplish color. Um, that, that's my personal preference, but throw yourself a four or five aught uh, worm hook on there, a three eighths up to a half ounce. And it doesn't have to be a, a Mondo worm, but whatever you're dragging around, you know, trench hog, uh, whatever your favorite bait is, put it on there and just drag that around. When, you've, when you're when you fishing around with the moving baits and you see something like, oh man, there's a, there's a good tree I didn't see there. Oh, I think there's some brush or maybe, maybe there's a rock pile right here that I really need to focus on. That's when you wanna pick this up and you wanna just fish that thing really slow. This is for the lethargic fish. Like right now, middle of the day, um, nothing's really happening, not seeing any shad popping up, no schooling taking place. This is, this is most likely the move, is just dragging this around. All right, so to get you guys on a real world example here, I'm just gonna show you something that I would fish during this time of the day. I'm just gonna look with the electronics a little bit. I'm gonna pick up the spoon, something I can fish pretty fast and look with. Uh, fishing these spoons, if, if you guys have never done it, it's actually um, it's a pretty fun strike. You know, off here on a, on a big main lake point, we've got some shad. 
Uh, it's just mostly white bass that are hanging around them. And something that I'm gonna look for is a piece of cover that will hold. And right now I'm off of a ledge. So when I go up closer to the bank a little bit, this is gonna, this is gonna pop up to like 18 foot. And that's most likely where some of the bass are going to be. And how I work this bait is I'll throw it out, let it sink to the bottom, and then I'll hold my rod at about 10 o'clock. And as soon as I see my line, I'm talking as soon as I see my line go limp, I'll reel it up three to five times, just kind of depending on how excited these, these fish want to get. That's my usual retrieve. I don't do anything with the rod. I'm not lifting it. I'll just use the reel for the most part. And that's it. And when a fish hits it, you kind of just keep reeling until they, until they latch on. Yeah, I just saw a little group of something. I don't know what it was kind of up here on the hill. This would be a good opportunity for really deep diving crankbait too. I just, I hate throwing those. <laughs> I would rather throw this or swim bait over, you know, 18 foot, 20 foot diving crankbaits. A lot of shad off the, off the ledge, which is telling me it's not really feed time. When, uh, when the fish get pretty excited, they'll push the shad up onto the flat and they'll, they'll use it as a little dinner table, start eating them. Oh, crap. Oh, it came out, it came out. It must've been some brush or something. There's definitely a pile to my right that I was not aware of. Which I was probably just chunking my spoon all in and around that. So I've got a, there's a little brush, a brush pile or something right here. So the rock brush or combination of both. I'm gonna back, back the boat up and try to focus on this with the worm. on the worm guys oh gosh that's a good one too he just took off with that mondo hot summer mouth it's usually when they get off ah all right we'll try to keep them off that hot boat carpet come here Whew. there's a good one Middle of the day bass right there. Just a chunk. I think it's probably a little over four pounds. Really chunky summer fish. And just absolutely sucked that Mondo worm. And we're gonna get this guy right back to the lake because he's basically baking. Baking out here in the sun. Off they go. Oh, man. Burn some calories out here. So. That is example number one for me, how I like to target midday. You know, it's, it's four o'clock right now. That's a good sized bass for out here. The next option that we could do is go up and try to find some shade. And out here, there's, there's hardly any uh, overhanging cover, you know, big um, cliffs and things like that that create shade in um, good water depth. So it's, it means boat docks, it's marinas. So if I have shade, whether that be tree overhangs, marina docks, tires, anything that creates shade, I'm going to go weightless wacky worm and a swim jig. That's me. That's me personally. Uh, the reason I go with a swim jig and I'll put some sort of like grub on there, like our love grub or something that kind of swims. Um, something I can skip good on the back of it. Three eights, 
That's really good, even lighter if you can get away with it. And you can skip that thing a uh, pretty good ways under the cover. So if you're if you got tree overhangs, um, you know you got these docks that are fish are suspended under. Anything fish are suspended under. Uh, I like to swim that a few feet under the surface, and then obviously the weightless wacky worm. You can skip a mile, and then you're able to work that down to whatever depth you want. If you're seeing fish on your electronics, or you just you have an inkling, or you even see fish. You guys just saw a bird, uh, like a little white heron that was just kind of hovering there. I just watched him snipe a shad from a fish that was coming up and trying to eat the shad. And anytime that you see, you don't have to have shade or anything for this, but it usually happens around creek channels. Um, I used to see this on fork all the time with the, uh, the blue herons, but they would sit and wait over creek channels in the late, part of the day the hot part of the day the summer into the evening they would sit there and wait because in the evenings those shad about five o'clock or so you know they start rising up and the bass will push them all the way up to the surface and they come right on in and steal those shad away from the fish and those birds fish for a living so that so they know what they're doing that's where you want to have a little swim bait maybe that swim jig any anything you can fire over there quick a top water ready to go as well so uh, we're gonna fish some tires that have a little cover where I've seen this bird and then we're gonna go fish underneath some uh, some big covered docks as well and see if we can get any bites so this is my absolute favorite swim jig combo um, I was last season I was fishing all my swim jigs on the uh, reaction rod in the in the gold series I loved it it's still one of my favorites for fishing swim jigs but this year I switched to one of these glass composites and uh, I just get I just get a little better distance with it and the, the feel on it is amazing with a swim jig your, your hook is way more exposed so you don't have to worry about setting the hook like a regular jig really wrenching on them but this uh, this this light a light glass I just I'm about it. I'm about it for the skippage. And I throw mine on braid. I may not get as many bites, but I'm just I'm able to skip really well with that right there. Oh yeah, skippy McDoodle. Obviously like that is going to happen. Oh God, I think that was a crappie. Knock the tar off of it. Little brush, little brush around the docks. There we go. The worm strikes again, y'all. Now that one came out of this brush right here. It's not a big one. That's why I thought it was crappie. It's about the size of one. There's some brush right there. So pretty close to the dock there's a couple of bass maybe a few crappie down there the old mondo strikes again sprayed lettuce fun little summertime color so you could spend all day picking apart these docks swim jigs good because you can move with pretty good speed uh, the wacky rig I'm not gonna show you guys I'm assuming a lot of you know how to fish that wacky rig on a spinning setup. If you wanna see my exact setup for that, I'll leave a link for the video here down in the description where you can go check out my full setup for using the spinning gear to skip up under. And uh, that's how I just fish it in open water as well. But if you don't have floating docks, if you don't have overhanging shade with suspended fish, you just have regular docks, fixed docks. I would fish those with like a jig, a Texas rig, a shaky head 
and fish that, that worm or whatever you're fishing on the bottom and target those fish. So docks, if they're fixed, those are an excellent way because they got shade. You're just gonna have to target that cover, post, try to get back up under there. It's a great way to target bass in the summer as well. Look at that. The white bass are already starting to school. Here comes the blue heron. Off to get some shad. Okay. Here they are feeding on good size shad. Throw this two step out here. See if we can have a little fun. Get a big bass to come up too. Oh, see you, buddy. Never turn my back on you. Man, they're busting good size shad right here. This is when you want that walking bait. This is hottest part of the day right now and you, you almost wouldn't expect this to be happening. You would expect like right at dark for this to happen. But this is a good, I'm telling you, it's like the second sort of feeding starts happening this time of day. And there's not as many anglers on the lake as well because no one wants to be out here when it's this hot. So don't be that guy. Don't pass up the white bass or the striper, or whatever it is. Because a lot of these lakes, the bass will hang around everything hangs around that it's feeding on shad are you kidding me that's like a buffet so don't be that guy that turns your back on them because you might just throw in there with a spoon or a crankbait something on the bottom and hook into a big bass some of those huge bass hang around uh, white bass schools and will eat the falling dying shad and also eat the white bass themselves so don't count that out and look for them look for them just popping you might even get them on a top water. Don't ignore it. Don't turn your back on them, okay? Do me proud, fishing freaks. Never turn your back on a white bass. So we have explored catching fish in the midday, on the brush, around the docks, looking for that shade, deep water. Now, arguably everyone's favorite is top water. So we're, we're coming into the, uh, the evening hours, and this is really one of the only top waters that I pick up in the blazing hot summer. So we're gonna go throw this around some, some windy points that probably have some bait fish on them. We'll go search around and see if we can get any bass to dance on our top water here. You want braid or monofilament because they float, but I, I like the connection with the braid and this combination with this rod. This is the Green Series Reaction Rod. And with the braid, it's it's just perfect for throwing these walking baits like this. I'm gonna pause for a second here. I'm gonna keep the two-step on hand. I'm actually not gonna attach it to the reel. I'm gonna put it just off to the side. Oh, dang it. You guys, yeah, <laughs> just missed one. I got another bass on the Mondo worm. It's kind of swimming a worm through a brush pile where I was wanting to throw a top water and uh, it might be the biggest one of the day. Oh, there's a nice fish. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just can't deny the Mondo worm, man. It's just undeniable in the heat of summer. All right, we'll let this beautiful baby go. Nice fish. Oh yeah. Got something. That's going to be a white bass. Decided to pick up a jigging spoon, kind of work it through that same area. Not seeing the tops going crazy yet. Oh. 
other reaction bite. I think that's another white bass. So largemouth be coming up at the top, trying to jump. That's literally white bass. There's crappie in there, and there's largemouth all on the same point. These are these are big. These kind of look like largemouth on the graph. That one was suspended on the brush. There we go. Oh, this might be a crappie. Crappie time. Big small, we catch them all. Three species, beautiful fish. All right, that shows you what the spoon will do. Power the spoon, pretty undeniable. Worm and spoon. up throwing the two-step down the shaded bluff if it was gonna happen right here if it was gonna happen at all it was gonna happen right here shade a little chop but I don't see any exploders man no no shad chasing activity which is weird because when I first got out here I saw shad chasing activity at like 3 30 in the afternoon right now is prime time you would think for top water it ain't happening so I think they're gearing up for the night the night time feet up it's been a straight up worm dangle and that's okay with me and that is my take on extreme heat summer dangling y'all it was a tough day it can be a meat grinder out here but we still were able to catch some bass and it was all about the plastics really I, I caught some other fish on on different baits but uh, like I said in the beginning plastics 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 uh, the mondo worm it's just summertime player. That's that's just what it is. And really every bite that I got was offshore. Uh, I was hoping to get a late day or even a midday uh, around the bank, kind of shallow topwater bite, see some fish chasing, but I, I never saw any of that up close to the bank. It, it was all offshore. So that makes it more difficult, you know, finding those fish. But again, the keys, you gotta find either deep water uh, with cover, uh, shade, or some sort of current. Now, the dissolved oxygen this time of year is, is like gold for bass. So any way they can get it, they are going to take advantage of that. Take care of yourself in the heat, drink lots of water, definitely cover up with some gear. Uh, go to guggensquad.com. You can get loaded up on boat shorts, some of the uh, apparel that feels like you're wearing nothing, which helps out here. And then get yourself at least some Mondo worms because you're gonna need them. Thank you guys for hanging out with me on this scorcher day. Subscribe to the channel for more outdoor adventures, and I'll see you on the next one.